In this presentation, we're going to talk about how we calculate heat input for the gas tungsten arc and gas metal arc welding processes. We'll take a look at the new code requirements for calculating heat input and answer questions about what is a complex waveform power supply? What is total instantaneous energy? What is average instantaneous power? And then finally, we want to talk about how we calculate heat input on the ARC Specialties welding systems. Hi, I'm Dave Hebel with ARC Specialties. And uh, today, I have Dick Holdren with me. And uh, we're going to be talking about heat input. This past year, we've had a lot of questions uh, regarding how we calculate the heat input on our machine. And the question, what is waveform controlled welding? and what in the world is instantaneous energy and instantaneous power. So Dick, what's brought about the, the change in the code that people are asking these questions? Well, a number of years ago, uh, ASME funded research in the area of studying the effects of different uh, pulse parameters and different waveforms on the resulting material properties. And they, what they found was that even with the same setting for a given welding power source, uh, you could end up with very different material properties based upon how that power source reacted to the, the welding operator. So first of all, uh, can you define what a waveform uh, controlled power supply is? Well, it, Waveform control welding is a, it's, it's basically a process modification where the power source has software to purposely manipulate the output welding waveform, which is reacting to the actual welding conditions. And with these, with the advent of these new generation welding power sources, uh, they adaptively change the waveform according to changes such as contact tip to work distance. And to account for this, uh, the amperage and voltage must be determined in very minute increments, uh, i.e. instantaneous power or instantaneous energy. And so I know in a lot of the power sources, as you change the stick out, you hear the frequency change. And, uh, pulse width and background, all these variables are changing and you can't see it. And so, uh, so how do we measure that? Well, as the, as the waveform shape and amplitude change, uh, the resulting amperage and voltage levels change without any external adjustment. Um, right. And research has shown that, uh, that these resulting changes do affect the amount of energy being generated by the welding arc. Right. Um, and so for purposes of qualification and control, heat input becomes the primary measurement that's used when we're working to these various okay. codes. So how would you define heat input? Well, uh, it's by, by definition, heat input is the amount of energy being applied to the workpiece during welding. Uh, the actual, uh, the, the true term is really heat input rate, and that's basically the heat input per length of weld. As used in the various codes, while we're really talking about heat input rate, the codes refer to it as simply as heat input. Okay, I heard you use another term, arc energy. So when you speak of arc energy, what is that? Well. True heat input, meaning how much energy is actually being uh, applied to the work, um, is the amount of energy supplied by the welding arc multiplied by some type of a thermal efficiency factor. And that thermal efficiency factor depends on the welding process. So it's a, a constant uh, for a given process. So since that is a constant, it's convenient for us, since we can physically measure the electrical energy being used, we simply 
use that as a means of quantifying the heat input. The other thing that is, um, is an issue is the fact that while we have these specific thermal efficiency factors, there isn't a lot of real agreement in terms of whether those factors are actually, uh, uh, actually valid. Right. Um, so what we are using as a means of measuring heat input is truly the arc energy. And it's the product of the welding amperage and the voltage per unit of time. Or by our uh, formula, we would have amps times volts times time giving us a measurement of uh, joules as the amount right. of energy right. being applied. Um, and then when we divide that by travel speed, now we have the amount of energy applied per unit length. So the heat input that we're talking about and that we're measuring during qualification and process control and production um, is the amps times the volts divided by travel speed, giving us a, a factor of joules per inch. Okay, we're all familiar with the old conventional formula for heat input, amps times volts times 60 divided by inches per minute. But with waveform controlled welding, the output dynamics require another means for determining the heat input in uh, something we call total instantaneous energy, or TIE, and uh, average instantaneous power, AIP. So Dick, help us define what TIE and AIP <laughs> really mean. Well, one of, the, one of the committees that I work on is uh, a committee, it's, uh, we're developing a standard called B2.5, and it is a standard that will help everyone understand how we physically measure these, uh, uh, these quantities so we can consistently qualify uh, or quantify heat input. Now total instantaneous energy is the sum of the products of amps, volts, um, and time. And we call it instantaneous because we are sampling that waveform at at least five kilohertz or 5,000 times a second. So even though that waveform may change abruptly during uh, each cycle, we're capturing those values and making those multiplication measurements at each of those uh, instants. Right. And then we add those all together. Um, so when we, to calculate heat input using total instantaneous energy, we divide the, the sum of these products, the total instantaneous energy, by the length of weld. Right. And that gives us a measurement of heat input. Joules per inch. Right. right. Okay. And then we have average instantaneous power. Here we are looking, again, we are sampling at uh, at least 5,000 times a second, and we are taking the average of those uh, products of amps and volts um, over some amount of time. So to calculate heat input using average instantaneous power, we divide the average instantaneous power times the number 60 by the travel speed. So again, we end up with joules per inch of weld. Right. So you can see we end up with the same unit right. of measure. And uh, <clears throat> if I looked at the code correctly, uh, it says that you can use all three methods for calculating it. The old conventional way, instantaneous energy and uh, average instantaneous power, correct? Correct. Okay, but if we're using wave-controlled welding, we can only use the latter two, instantaneous exactly. energy and power. Right. So, uh, so let's go back and 
answer some of the first questions uh, I stated. Uh, is the ARC-5 and the gas tungsten arc welding process waveform controlled welding? And you know, we are pulsing the arc, so everybody says, oh, it's, it's waveform controlled. How would you answer that? No, it certainly is not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, so the, the PLC generates that waveform. Uh, you have a WPS that states peak amps. A percentage of that is the background amperage. You've got your voltage and the, the time of pulse and background. So it's fixed. It never changes. And the AVC, or the automatic voltage control, is maintaining the voltage while we're welding. So uh, it's not changing and correcting. No. No. So it is not uh, waveform controlled welding. So if, if our ARC-5s are, are not operating in the waveform control mode, uh, how, how do we calculate heat input with our equipment? In the ARC-5, we're sampling the amperage and voltage every millisecond, or a thousand times a second. And so we're recording those values during the peak and averaging them together. We look at the background amps and volts. We average those together. We're taking peak and background to find our average current, and we take that number and plug it into the amps times volts times 60 divided by inches per minute. So how do, you, how do we know if we're reading the peak or average amps uh, on the HMI? Okay, on the HMI or operator screen, we have a button over on the left side that says volts peak and amps peak. And so when it's in peak peak, that number is the number off the WPS, amps and volts. And it's also the number that we're reading on the screen real time. If we toggle that button, it'll come up peak volts, average amps. And so it automatically averages the peak in the background so you can just read it off the screen. You don't even have to calculate it. If the peak time and background times are equal, it's e easy to average those together. The problem is that if the peak and background are not the same, now we have to plug it into the formula uh, to calculate what that average value is. Well, we've made it easy for you. Forget about the formula. If you toggle the little button and it says uh, volts peak amps average, we do the calculation for you and you can just read it off of the front of the screen. You, you talked about how we're using uh, uh, the peak and the background amperage to calculate uh, an average. What do we do in terms of, uh, of voltage? Are we using the peak or are we using the average voltage in our calculation? We're always using the peak voltage for our calculation. And uh, the way an automatic voltage control works is it only corrects during the peak portion of the cycle. During the background, the head is locked out. If we didn't lock it out at the background, the, the head would oscillate up and down as we're pulsing, and uh, that just doesn't work. So we're only uh, looking at the peak voltage. And uh, when you do your procedure qualification, your PQR, we're recording that peak voltage when we look at our WPS in the shop in production, we're using the peak voltage, and so no error has occurred because uh, we're always using the peak voltage. And another way to look at it, the, the background voltage, you can't preset it. You don't know what it is until you're actually welding, and you'd have to have a scope in order to, to actually read that value. So how is an outside inspector know if, you're, if it's accurate or not if he has, doesn't have a means of measuring it? Correct. Okay, the codes, uh, both the ASME Section 9 and uh, D11, um, allow you to use instantaneous energy or uh, instantaneous power for heat input uh, for non-waveform control power, si power supplies. Uh, to use instantaneous energy or power for 
heat input would require a new procedure qualification, and that could get expensive. Right. Although we, we would love to <laughs> help you qualify those additional right. procedures. Um, it, we gotta be, uh, we gotta be smart about this. And uh, uh, what we're trying to do is develop a procedure that can be re repeated in the shop so we know what properties we're ending up with. So how do we accomplish that? And, uh, well, I've had people ask the question, if my customer in insists upon having average instantaneous power, can you give that to me? Well, we've gone ahead and, yes, we can. We've added that uh, into the ARC-5 control. And so if you hit the uh, heat input button, it, it will toggle from this conventional heat input to AIP or average instantaneous power. And the way that works, uh, as Dick mentioned, you have to sample at least 5,000 times a second. And so in this case, we're actually reading at 20,000 times a second. And we're using the formula for average instantaneous power. So we're taking the average of the sum of the products of amps times volts we know our travel speed, so we know time and distance. And so we can uh, calculate and display average instantaneous power. Okay, when we're talking about instantaneous energy and power calculations, it's really intended for uh, waveform controlled uh, gas metal arc welding and the pulse mode. And so let's kind of shift gears now and look at uh, gas metal arc pulse welding. And here we see a picture of a, the waveform of a pulse weld. The top trace is the welding current and the bottom trace is the welding voltage. And if you look at it closely, you can see that the pulse time is just under about two milliseconds. And the peak current is 375 amps at 33 volts with the background current of only 30 amps at 18 volts. Looking at the HMI operator screen, we see the average amps and volts. And it's displayed, uh, it's the same as on the front of the power supply, it's average amps and volts. Using the conventional heat input method, we are sampling the amps and volts every millisecond or a thousand times a second. And at 16 inches a minute travel speed, we have a heat input of 15.6 kilojoules of heat using the amps times volts times 60 divided by inch per minute uh, heat input formula. So how do we find the instantaneous power heat input? For average instantaneous power calculations or AIP, we're using the average of the products of amps times volts at a sample rate of 20 kilohertz or 20,000 times a second. And we know that our travel speed, so we know time and distance. So we plug it into the formula for our calculation. So looking back at the HMI operator screen, if I toggle the heat input button, I get average instantaneous power heat input. So that's how we calculate heat input using the old conventional formula and how we do it using the new average instantaneous power formula. These new heat input uh, calculation features uh, will be on all the new ARC-5s in the future. Uh, moving forward, we'll have them available. Also, as an upgrade option, should you have a customer that just insists on having uh, the new heat input requirement. And uh, special thanks to you, Dick, for stopping by and taking time to help explain the code. And ho hopefully we can understand this a little better moving forward. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.